Well, for more on Mahathir's visit to China, I'm joined by Sarhan Hatapolu, CEO of Berry and CGTN's Global Economics Analyst. Welcome back to the show. Nice to be here, Rochelle. So as we know, China and Malaysia each had their priorities going into this visit. What would you say were the main outcomes? I think the main outcome was um, pretty much expected, actually. I wasn't surprised that uh, the, the Prime Minister of Malaysia went there with a kind of less sharp criticism of China because of the fiscal situation that Malaysia has been under and is feeling more and more, that the friendship, economic friendship especially, uh, would continue. And I wasn't surprised what I heard today. Uh, what, if anything that was surprising was the fact that uh, Dr. Mahathir went into this uh, meeting having said certain things which he probably wishes he hadn't when he was running for the campaign. But uh, having said that, he had, he's adamant on reducing costs for uh, Chinese investment in, into Malaysia, and he stood firm on that. But uh, what I heard today was, um, uh, for investors too, was very positive in terms of continuation of a strong relationship between the two countries. And we certainly saw that positivity in their joint statement. They both agreed to adopt strategic and long-term vision and also work for the sustained and steady development of their comprehensive strategic partnership. How do you think we might see that play out? Well, the uh, Belt and Road Initiative, for example, um, Dr. Mader, Prime Minister Mader, said very, very encouraging um, statements on, on these. And the fact that he met with Jack Ma, as well as other uh, entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneur leaders in, in China, tells me that um, he's more interested in getting Chinese business into Malaysia, something that was not discussed very much. And a lot of investors were worried that he was going to actually reduce investments from China. He's very um, happy with what he's seen in China. He's, uh, he's he talked about BRI before. And uh, in the six months to a year term, I think we're going to see more Chinese business coming in with the government investments actually cutting costs and still maintaining presence in the country. And there certainly wasn't a shortage of sectors that they were looking at. They discussed cooperation on trade, counterterrorism, tourism, obviously commodities like palm oil, and also exploring talks when it comes to cross-border e-commerce. What do you think will be the top priorities for both countries? Well, I think you said it. The fact that the, 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 the sectors, there are a lot of sectors that they talked about, and it's not only about economics, it's also politics. Now, I think we need to just uh, think about what Malaysia has experienced in the past uh, three months or so. With the real GDP uh, increasing at 0.3% in the second quarter, quarter on quarter, compared to 1.7 three months before, um, the cancellation of the goods and services tax, which is going to be a huge burden on the fiscal situation in Malaysia, uh, and the fuel subsidies. So if you look at all of these things, investors were worried. But now, uh, with opening up uh, for more agreements on different sectors, um, I, I believe the relationship is going to get stronger, and it is going to include different areas. In the a lot of people were thinking, oh, it's just going to be retail. No, it's going to be construction. It's going to be infrastructure again. Uh, and that relationship, economic relationship, is going to uh, continue getting stronger. Now, obviously, every economic relationship has its sticking points. What do you think are going to be the main sticking points in this relationship? I think it's still the cost. Um, the the government before Dr. Mahathir has been very um, generous, if you will, with awarding contracts, uh, not only to Chinese investors, but pretty much everyone who wanted to come into Malaysia. And the lack of transparency, the lack of interest rates on these loans that were coming in uh, has cost the country a lot of money. So the priority for the, for the Malaysian government is how can we save money but still continue our strong relationship with China. And I think China understands that President Xi has, has gone after graft and uh, fraud, if you will. A former uh, Chinese ambassador in Malaysia acknowledged that there were some Chinese investors coming into Malaysia, uh, taking advantage of the situation, and he actually apologized to Malaysian people. So that's the sticking point. Will there, will there be a situation where the two parties can sit down and cut costs in the infrastructure investment coming into Malaysia from China. I believe they will find an opportunity to do so. So if they are able to achieve these things and, and still continue to develop closer ties, what do you think that means for the region as a whole? It's very important to create a stronger region nowadays with all the tariff situations uh, that we know, the tension between the US and China. Uh, the RCEP concept is developing. Uh, Malaysia is playing a role in it. So um, it is quite important for not only Malaysia, the ASEAN countries overall, 
and China to have a stronger economic and political relationship at a time when uh, the protectionism or waves of protectionism are kind of beginning to show uh, their ugly heads in the region. All right. Always good to have you on. Sarah Khan Hatafolu there, CGTN's Global Economics Analyst and CEO of Berry.